Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk a little bit more about lit HTML and there has been a really nice update lately. Uh, before this there were some updates since I last reported on this. I talked about this I think five months ago and they released uh, EA, EI 11 support so Internet Explorer 11 support and so on uh, and some small changes has been there as well but now they made a major change 0.11 came out the developers think that this is probably the last API change that will happen before 1.0 so I think it's interesting to cover this again and look into lit HTML what have changed what can we use it, uh, what new things can we use in it, and so on. Uh, so first off, we can look at the change log here. We see they added support for property event, boolean bindings to default syntax. So if we look at this um, bindings table here, where we can see the different kind of bindings you can do, you can have a simple text binding, uh, where you can actually input any response to either some generation of HTML or anything like that. So this could be used to have some JavaScript creating some, some kind of text that you want to output. It can be HTML. Then you have this uh, attribute and this is um, just used as a property variable to that attribute. So the, it can't be HTML for instance. And then you have this uh, boolean attribute and it will look for the truthfulness of this boolean so it can't be anything that isn't going to validate to true so you can also use a function that returns a boolean value and so on and then you have this property value and this is uh, binding of any type or any value that you can bind to that property and lastly you have an event handler where you can bind any function that you want to execute when this event triggers and you see here that you actually get the event uh, data as well that you can send through to the function so these are uh, quite interesting and uh, nice binding types that you can use um, you also have a guard directive and a when directive and one thing that is interesting to see here that they have actually moved all the directives to a top directives level there is a lib folder uh, still but i think that pretty much nothing in that folder is something that i would use i think it's kind of low level and if you want to build your own things um, in lit so if you want to make extend the language you can use things in the lib folder but i think that directives are actually more useful if you're just building a site and they merged uh, the core and uh, lit html function and they also removed lit extended and one thing that uh, will be removed with that is the uh, SVG rendering. I don't know if anyone was actually seriously using that, but it, and it might appear again sometime. Uh, but uh, I don't think that you lose that much when <laughs> when you remove that. Um, so let's look at some examples here. Um, I have already talked about this uh, directives change here in in the source so if you are wondering what directives are available you can look in in the source folder of directives and all these can be linked in your project so let's look at some example here so if we go into my first example of guard and guard is a new function that will take something that you want to render and when it's rendered it will not re-render that value until it finds a change in the data used to render that element. So it will cache the element, not re-render it if it doesn't find any changes. So let's look at this guard example here. If you want to use guard 
you need firstly to import guard so you have that directive to use in your code. So that's an extension to lit.html, so you need to add that separately. You see here that I have a function with some items, and then I have a function that actually uh, outputs these items. Down here I have a guard that actually looks at these items and checks that uh, these items uh, haven't changed and if they haven't changed the second time I run this it will not run this map function up here it will not uh, re-render that it will only uh, cache, uh, write out the cached result so it will uh, write it out again and the third time again just the cached result and so on so you will get a faster uh, execution of this code and this could be really useful if you are running uh, creating a router for instance or anything like that and you have something that you want to display on screen and then you want it not to change if the values haven't changed um, so let's look at some example here you see that just prints it out this example is not really visual because it's just so little code you can't really see the difference i will have a better example of not using guard but a similar function uh, that uh, will demonstrate this a little bit better and so if we go to the next here it's when uh, you see here that i have a page that i show when uh, functionality so this will render a page and then when I change a boolean value we will see another page so first off I have some styling up here so you will see the button and the image will not be too large I have a little function here and this is actually the uh, click function for my click event and it will change the checked value that I find up here from false to true and then I will re-render my view you see here I have page one it will display this large image and then it will have a button that will switch to uh, page one and if I and the next page here shows an, a different image and I have the switch uh, that was switched to true so if you see down here when the value is truthful it will show the first part and when it's uh, falsy it will show the second part and the interesting thing here is that these are cached so if they are, haven't changed they will be cached so if you flip between them you can actually see that uh, you don't get any flicker or anything like that it's just changing the cached value that you already downloaded so if we uh, look at this example here. We open the when example uh, And you need to type it correctly and Here you see that I get an image it takes some time for this image to load and then I can go to the other dim image You see here the different page it takes some time for that to load as well You see some flicker, but if I switch back you see this is instantaneously. It's not re-rendering that image uh, it's not downloading that image again. It's just changing the value of what cached item to show. If you are using this in production, the, they will be cached in the browser. And the uh, next, last but not least, example is an iterable example. And these are functions that are a sync. And they will await for some value and then either replace the current value or append the current value so I have two divs here that would show these different behaviors so if we go into the iterable JS you can see here that we first have this little function wait that will is a promise that will wait for a timeout to actually happen and then we have this generator function here and it's a generator because it's have a star and it's a sync and it has a while loop that will never end and it will yield a new integer value every second so it will wait for a second yield a value wait for a second yield a value and so on 
And if we look at these function down here, we have one function that says count, and then we'll, it will count up and it will replace the current value with a new value, and that will be done into the element of replace. And then we have a sync append here, and that will append a value counting up inside of this append div. So if we look at this example in action, um, see iterable, you can see here that it starts on zero, and every second I get either a replaced value in the first or an appended value in the second. I can see a lot of different things that you can build with, with these directives. I think the uh, uh, lit HTML package has improved. There are a lot of new interesting things uh, to work with and they have squashed a few bugs and, and so on as well. So um, if you uh, haven't used it yet, try it out. Uh, if you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you have any questions about LitHTML, leave them down below. And uh, if you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And I really hope to see you in the next video.